day, y'all. Don't take that too literally. This is not a Diddy party. We're glad to have you guys here, man. As always, I have my beautiful off-the-screen co-host, Jax, my gorgeous wife. We've got Zero and Moxie, the dogs, who will probably come and harass and annoy the chat here at some point. Um, but we're going to be talking about something kind of exciting tonight. Just so you guys know, we're talking about Skittles the Rapper, Takashi Snitch 9. Uh, I'm just going to say this. Like, I'm not a hater very often, bro. I'm only a hater like one day out of the month. And I reserve that day almost every single time for Takashi Snitch 9, bro. I do not like this dude. And I don't even care that much that he's a snitch. Dude ain't snitch on me. What I hate about this dude is that the dude is a chomo. So we're going to be going over all of that. And we're going to be going over why the feds just raided his house and all of those details because is dude going to federal prison? He just might. We're going to have to check and see. While we are here, though, I want to give a huge shout out to the mods. The mods keep this a safe place for us to be able to hang out without people annoying us, without people being super weird. Um... I do have news. Trev tonight is out on a date with his beautiful wife, Cass, both of whom we love. Absolutely. And we are going to be adding a new mod tonight. Um, I believe that he's in the chat actually right now. He is. I am looking for him. This is only going to take one second and then we are going to get underway. So, uh, you guys, I would like to, uh, welcome... Ooh, I just hit the wrong button. I'm really sorry, Joseph. I just accidentally modded you. Uh, I know that I've never talked to you about that at all whatsoever. I will fix that. But you guys, uh, I have big thumbs and a small screen. Dr. Dre Light, welcome. Thank you for being a moderator. We love you so much, bro. Thank you for being here and helping to keep this uh, a safe and a cool place. Joseph, I'm sorry that I accidentally hit your button, man. No disrespect intended at all whatsoever. So... You guys, we're going to be getting into this. This is some pretty interesting stuff. Anytime the feds hit somebody, it means that there's been a long, ongoing investigation. Now, when you say feds, there can be a lot of different federal agencies involved. So we're going to get into all of that and all of what's going on with Takashi Snitch 9. But I want to give you a background on his legal history here. Um, first and foremost, most people don't really know or understand what his very first case was. So he's had legal issues throughout his entire career, but the first case that he got hit on was in 2015. His real name is Daniel Hernandez, also known as Takashi Snitch 9, or as I like to call him, Skittles the Rapper. He pled guilty to use of a child in a S performance, uh, the act of which was filmed and he released it. So he did stuff with somebody that he shouldn't have that was underage he filmed it and he released it to the internet, which is absolutely insane to me. Um, and so many people don't know about it. In fact, it's hard to find articles about it a lot of the time. Uh, I have tried to release videos multiple times about it on different platforms. Uh, it's part of what contributed to me getting banned on TikTok at one point. They don't like you talking about it. Now, the details, I did go into the details the last few times I talked about it, and the details of what happened are pretty graphic. It's pretty graphic. It's pretty disgusting. So... Um, I'm not going to go into any of that. Just know that he did plead guilty and they gave him a sweetheart deal for some reason. Like he got a really good deal for what he did and he doesn't have to register and he never even got any prison time for it. All of which is absolutely insane to me. Um, so that was his first legal troubles. Then as we all know, Hey, raccoon man, 60. Thank you so much, homie. Um, as a lot of us know, he got a racketeering case in 2018. He was arrested for racketeering, firearms, drug charges as a part of a federal investigation into the Nine Trey Gangster Blood Gang. This is the one that everybody knows about because this is the one that he went full bore state's evidence on. Um... Cooperation with authorities, Takashi 69 cooperated with authorities providing information that led to the arrest and conviction of several gang members, including his former associates. Not only did he tell on them, he went to court, sat in court and witnessed. He gave witness testimony against all of these dudes. And now a lot of people justify it by like, they did him dirty. 
Okay, what I, I'm not going to argue with you about that. He joined a gang, wanted to be street. Street shit happened to this dude, and he went and ran and, and turned, bro. He turned on all of them. Were they doing foul stuff to him? Absolutely. I will 100% say that they were doing him dirty as hell, but that's not how you handle stuff if you're a gangster, and dude wanted to be a gangster real hard. Um, so... You know, that's just not how it's done on the streets, dog. So that's, I'm, I I don't live the streets anymore, bro. I'm not in any way, shape, or form trying to get up here and act like I'm some hardcore gangster anymore, bro. I lived that life. I did my time in that life. I'm a family man, bro. The most G shit that I can do right now is take care of my family, handle my business, move in a positive way, and help people in my community not to go down the same road that I went down. But still, it irks me. It rubs me a little raw. Sentencing. Due to his cooperation, Takashi 69 received a reduced sentence in December 2019. He was sentenced to two years in prison with five years of supervised release. So supervised release, for those of you who don't know, that's like probation or parole. Um, his release. He was released early in April of 2020 due to concerns over COVID-19 after serving about 17 months of his sentence. Look, man, uh, I'm just going to tell you, there were thousands of people incarcerated during COVID, and I don't know many people that got released due to COVID concerns. The people that I know of that got released due to COVID concerns were people that were actually like elderly or they had like autoimmune or respiratory issues that could actually kill them. This dude... He was just a he was just a pet, bro. He was the Fed's pet, so they let him out early. He was probably also a pain in the ass because you know they had to keep him in some real solid protective custody, like that that high level Illuminati level protective custody with all the people that he told on, and the people that he told on weren't just like average lames, bro. He was telling on street gangsters, bro, like connected people. If you guys remember. Not too long ago, I think, was it last year? I think it was last year. They caught his ass slipping down south in Florida, bro. They caught him at an LA Fitness. And it wasn't even the same gang. It wasn't even the gang that he screwed over. It was just a gang that, like, they get along. They kick it. Like, they, you know, they roll on the streets a little bit together. Three of them caught him slipping in an LA Fitness gym bathroom. And they live-streamed beating his ass, bro. They beat him bloody in, in a, in a planet or a, LA Fitness, uh, got him in the locker room. And then afterwards they were like, hey, it's just business. It's nothing personal, homie. Can I get your autograph? As they laughed at him while he walked out of there like, no, you guys beat me up. Just punked him all across the floor. It was wild. Now these dudes live streamed it because they wanted that cred, bro. They wanted that, that clout so bad that they would live stream something like that and end up knowing that they were gonna catch charges for live streaming that, putting it on the internet. Like, it's wild to me that we live in a, in a society today where people want clout and credibility so bad that they will literally commit crimes on video, live stream to the entire world, knowing that the prosecutors are gonna get their hands on it, that a jury's gonna see it. They'll do this stuff just to be the man, just to have that 15 minutes of fame. It cost them years in prison, this assault, because you know Takashi 6 9 pressed charges. If he's going to sit in a witness booth and he's going to snitch on all the homies, people that he actually kicked it with, if you whoop his ass in a bathroom, he's definitely sending you to prison. So post-prison career, after his release, Takashi 6 9 resumed his music career, releasing uh, new music and attracting attention for his con controversial persona and legal troubles. Ugh, ugh. So he has been arrested a couple times since then, most recently in the Dominican Republic with Yalen. Yalen is his girlfriend and Dominican rapper. He was arrested in October of 2023 after allegedly assaulting a Dominican music producer he and Yalen were working with. Arrested in January of 2024 on domestic violence charges in the Dominican Republic. Yalen was arrested December 2023 in Palm Beach, Florida. Video of her hitting Takashi with a two by four. She slapped him like that old school WWE Jim Duggan. Came in and just wham, bashed a two by four over his head, bro. Got him. Got his ass. Uh, so, um... Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Sounds like they have a lovely relationship. They must be quite a fun couple to hang out with. Um, so look, 
Now we're to where we're at right now. This brings us up to speed. Takashi is still in the Dominican Republic because he's facing charges in the Dominican Republic. Part of his release was conditional. He's not allowed to leave the Dominican Republic, so he can't be coming back to the States. He's got to sit his ass down where he's at because if he leaves, they're going to get him and they're going to drag him back and he's going to spend the rest of the time awaiting trial in jail. And with his record, it would be really, really easy for him to catch charges and, and do a, a decent amount of time in the in the DR. Now, also, I don't know how this is going to affect his legal issues here, because I believe that he should still be on parole, you know, post-prison supervision here. Because remember, it said that he had five years of post-prison supervision. That comes into play because they can violate him on that and they can run him however much time they want, bro. They can really bust it off deep inside him, bro. Like they can ditty him in the courtroom and he ain't got no recourse because he's, it's a violation. It's not like he goes to trial. So him even having negative contact with the police is a really bad look. It's a really bad look and it can send him directly back to prison. Like myself right now, I'm on probation. Uh, and if I have negative contact with the police, and let me explain negative contact. Negative contact means that if the police pull me over and, uh, you know, they, they have reason to think there's something in the car or if somebody calls the cops because I'm in an argument with somebody and the cops show up, I don't even have to be arrested, homie. That's considered negative contact. And I could hypothetically be thrown in prison for that. Like that easy, lickety split. So um, all of this looks really bad for him when he can come back to the United States. He could be facing a violation, but that's not even what the feds was in his house for. He has a house in Florida uh, that he got bought. His house got bopped. Um, they showed up there. So um, where is this house? His house is in Lake Worth. Lake Worth. Oh, Lake Worth and the Palm Beach, Florida uh, Sheriff's Office showed up. Um, they came there. It was the IRS that came there, the Internal Revenue Service. Now, look, there is all sorts of footage of them jacking up his cars, putting them on tow trucks, and taking his cars away. We all know Snitch Nine got some sick-ass whips, right? Like, dude's loaded. He's got a lot of money, and he's got some decent whips. Not anymore, homie. Not anymore, Yo, the IRS just peeled his ass back. Now, there's only a, a couple of reasons why they would be able to do this, and it all has to do with taxes, bro. Um, you know what I'm saying? Tax fraud, tax evasion. Um, it's all kind of interrelated. Um, now, here's the thing is they can come and seize your shit. Now, it, they can't put you in jail if you filed. If you filed your taxes, but you can't pay them, as long as you filed, they can't put you in jail for it. They can seize your assets, though. So it's unclear yet. They haven't released any details whether he he filed and wasn't didn't pay it because uh, he is a deadbeat ass dude, man. He's one hundred percent not a good dude. He doesn't pay his debts. He might have filed because he knew that he'd go to prison if he didn't, and then just didn't pay it. But if he didn't file, not only could he get brought up on federal charges, like straight Fed time. Uh, you know, going into a federal penitentiary for that. Um, but on top of that, that could also be another thing that would trigger a violation. In fact, just the fact that the IRS had to go to his house and seize his assets could also be grounds for him to get violated on his probation or parole. I'm not sure if he's on probation or parole, like Florida does things differently. Like I'm on probation, but what I did when I did my two years on house arrest, my two years on house arrest was considered a prison, uh, it was considered a prison set, but actually come to think of it, I believe that wasn't he, his, his whole case was fed, wasn't it? Because it was Rico. I think, so. I think it was a fed case. The feds don't mess around, bro. If they want you, they going to get you. He has had so much rope and he's done nothing but hang himself with it. Every single corner that he turns, he's done his, his own self dirty, man. Like, it's just not good, the positions that he's put himself in. So we're going to hear more about this. And as things progress, I'm going to give you guys 
uh, you know, the details when stuff actually lands. We're still waiting on the Dominican Republic case. We're still waiting to see what is exactly the details of why the IRS got him and if there's going to be any probation or parole violations for this dude to actually go to prison because he slid on that first charge, which is the reason I hate on him the most, bro. I hate on 6 9 the absolute most because... That dude did stuff with an underage girl, videotaped it, and then posted it across the internet. Like, violated an underage and then posted it on the internet for clout and views. That's nasty, and he never went to prison for that. He never got no uh, registry for that like he should have. So I want to see this dude fall. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not generally a hater. I save one day a month to hate on somebody. And uh, it's generally 6ix9ine. It's either 6ix9ine, Diddy, Danny Masterson. It's always a chomo, bro. It's always somebody who did some weird-ass skin beef stuff. So that's what we got on that. I need to catch up on some supers, man. I really appreciate you guys. I've seen you throwing some supers at me. Uh, I just wanted to get through this. So we're going to backtrack, and I'm going to get to every single one of them. Jaxie, you got some of them supers, right? Yes. Okay, so look. I can tell you right now, we got Funny on Onion. Can't wait to watch, uh, can't watch your content enough, brother. Also, love the music. Big love from Indiana Family. Yo, big love right back to you, man. I appreciate you, Funny on Onion. Hell yeah. My son Graves just walked in the door and he activated the dog. So if y'all heard some vicious attack Boston Terrier and French Bulldog, that's what happened. That's what, Graves, come here. Yo, you gonna come say hi, boy. Laura McKillen. Laura McMillan, thank you so much, sister. I really appreciate you. Uh, you guys, Graves wants to come say hi. What up, y'all? This is the youngin'. This, some of you guys follow him on TikTok. Some of you guys follow him here. This is my oldest child. Got my boy. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, you looking good, bro. Um, all right. So you got those supers for me? I appreciate you guys so much, man. Uh, 40 extras. Thank you so much. Big love and respect. Yo, your boy Skilla. What's up, man? Uh, yo, JD, much love from Fort Greg Adams, VA. Finally got to get some training in my MOS. 1391 bulk fuel specialist. This shit's kind of fun, actually. But hell yeah, good to be here. Bro, we are so glad to have you here. And thank you so much for your service and your sacrifice, dog. Our utmost respect to you, man. Go out there and get him. <laughs> Sorry, Zero. I don't know if you guys can see. I got this dog trying to hang out. Yeah. Uh, Billy motherfucking right. Thanks for getting my flag to me so fast. It's definitely a wall hanger. Yo, you got the flag, homie. Thank you so much. That's lit, bro. I love those flags. So he's talking about, we got flags, uh, these hats and these shirts. We have them in a tank top. We have them in a tee. We have the hats in black. We about to have the hats in camouflage. And we also have flags that hang on the wall. And it's all at my merch shop, uh, convictclothing.net, if y'all want to check it out. Thank you so much, Billy. I appreciate you picking that up. Big love and respect to you, big dog. Um, Ted Cruz with the top down. Good to see you in the chat, homie. Miss your face, dog. I seed the rains down in Arabia. Bro's always lit. Everything bro posts is lit, bro. I love Ted Cruz with the top down. Uh, Cowboy Rob. Sounds like he was more of a diaper gangster. <laughs> yeah, 100% facts, bro. 100% facts. I got no love associated for that dude at all whatsoever, man. He does bad things, bro. I, I just, I can't, I can't handle it when these dudes be touching on kids, bro. Especially to videotape it and put it on the internet. And you know, once it's on the internet, you can never really make it go away, bro. The internet is forever. The internet never forgets. Finbar Gallagher. You say that shit, but taking care of your family and community is honestly way more gangster than doing anything illegal. Much love always, JD. Finbar, I love you, bro. That's the way I feel about it, too. You know what I'm saying? That's 100% the way I feel about it, and I love you, bro. I'm glad to see you here, man. Thank you. Uh, Cowboy Rich, they probably caught him on a Diddy tape. Yo, he might be in there on a Diddy tape, bro. I don't know. I don't know if Takashi 6 9 we should actually see if Takashi has any uh, link-ups with Diddy. Uh, or any, like, correlations with Diddy. I don't know. I never paid much attention to uh, either of their music or either of their personal lives until they started getting caught up on this foul, bro. Once they get caught up on the foul, you're on my radar, bro, and I'm going to come for you. Uh, 
Uh, Laura McMillan, thank you so much, sis. So it looks like we're caught up on those that we were behind on. There's your phone back, baby. I love you. Uh, Steve McNelly, what's up, bro? How you doing? Hey, my wild Irish brother, thanks for being you and putting a smile on my face. Thinking Skittles may go to prison and mentioning Jim Dugan needed that because I have some wicked shit in my head and heart. Love y'all. Hey, I love you too, bro. And it's okay to be wicked as long as you aim it in the right direction. And I know you know what I'm talking about, brother. Big love and respect to you, homeboy. Um, Jessica Culp. Yo, y'all, Jessica Culp is in the chat. She is a mod from like day one. Day one, homie, right there. We missed you, sister. It's good to see you. Jessica said, long time no talk, JD. Life's been pretty, uh, life's been a bitch lately, so I'm glad to catch you live. Sis, we're just so happy to see you. We love you so much, and we're so happy that you're here. It's been a minute. I hope life is good. If you ever need anything, you know you can reach out, sis. Um, yo, Joseph Rooks, the accidental new mod, is in here killing it. Thank you so much, homeboy. I appreciate you. New Age Plug is in the house, you guys. I don't know if you guys know who New Age Plug is. If you don't, you're slipping. You're slipping, and you need to go follow New Age Plug and the YouTube streets. Shout out to the YouTube streets. Shout out to New Age Plug, bro. Big love and respect to you and all the boys, homeboy. Uh, Cowboy Rob, he's probably going to get just the tip. I believe it, bro. I believe it. Bro, they're going to put a lot of different types of tips in that boy if he goes back to prison, bro. Guaranteed. Um, Alex Petra's alt. We need a new, uh, types of inmates video, JD, bro. I really would like to do a new, uh, types of inmates video. It's been a minute since I did like a full length and incorporated skits and everything. I'd like to get back down to that, bro. That sounds good. Thank you for the, uh, recommendation there, homie. I see you, Jessica Culp. Good to see you again. Um, let's see. Uh, Mr. Loverman. So what exactly happened to get his house raided? So, Look, we're not 100% sure um, if it was if his house got raided for tax evasion or tax fraud, but those are really the only two reasons the IRS would come and just start pulling stuff out of his house. Now, keep in mind, Snitch9, Skittles the Rapper, he is in the Dominican Republic. He's not at his house in Florida. They came to his house, they went into his house and just started pulling out high-value items, bro. They pulled out his cars, his sick-ass whips. He don't got sick whips no more. Now the IRS, the U.S. government got sick whips. Um, and they took a bunch of other stuff from his house that was high value. Now, it's unclear as to whether or not they were in there investigating anything else while they served and executed that warrant to seize things. They may have. They very well may have. We're going to have to see about that as things progress. Right now, they're not giving us nearly enough information because this is super breaking news. Uh, so I just wanted to get on here and share it with y'all. Um, the Guidestone, good to see you again. Plug. Said, uh, New Age Plug said that shirt's fire. Thank you, homie. Thank you. I love these, man. The map line is what's up, bro. The hats to match. Uh, Izzy Dark Lord, what's up? Hey, JD. Uh, what is up tonight? Almost didn't make it because some dude wouldn't stay in their freaking lane, but I'm here, so it's good for me. Yo, bro, I'm glad that you did make it, bro. Uh, I always stay in my lane. I just got a big-ass lane, and it's wherever I choose it to be. I love you, dog. It's good to see you, Izzy. Um, Russia is here. What's up? Russia in the house. Good love. Uh, howdy JD from Kansas. Retro Gamer. Glad to see you. Thank you so much. Fishing with Foxy is here. Yes. Skits. All right. All right. I hear you. I hear you. I see you. I feel you. We'll get some skits popping up in here. <coughs> they take a really long time to do skits because it's like a lot of, uh, honestly, it's a lot of costume changes because like, I don't write out uh, I don't generally write out like an actual script for my skits. I just kind of go by the, the hair of my pants, bro. You know what I'm saying? And like, I'll just jump into one costume and start banging at myself and then jump into another and bang back at myself. It's like, it's kind of like fight club. You know, I'm just having arguments with myself and shit. And that's how the skits are made. But I got to change my clothes a lot. It's so much fun. And you, you know, such a huge mess. One minute I'm a convict. The next minute I'm wearing a cop hat, you know, and... <laughs> It looks so ridiculous. This hat is special, though. I had a customer who was a lady of the night uh, back in Daytona Beach, 
and she was servicing a police officer, uh, probably for like 40 bucks or 30 bucks, you know, giving him the sloppy toppy with the twist. And she stole his hat and brought it to me. She's like, JD, I stole you this police hat. And I was like, hell yeah, that's what's up. She really was the homie, bro. That was what's up. Um, so let's see what we got going on over here. Billy Joyner, what's up from Virginia Beach? Hell yeah, brother. I appreciate you. That shirt is badass. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, we're So the next, I think the next shirt that we're going to do for the Make Pedophiles Afraid Again line, um, we just came out with a camouflage hat with the orange words on it. And I think we're going to do a camouflage shirt too. So we're working on that right now. Um, I just want to say this real quick, man, like a uh, big shout out. If anybody can send some positive energy out to your boy, Jumpsuit Pablo, man, Jumpsuit goes to uh, court in the morning. Um, if you know Jumpsuit Pablo, he's a great dude. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, he's, he's an absolute, uh, he's an entertaining dude to say the least. Um, and he's been really cool with me, man. Um, he goes to court tomorrow and he's going to sentencing. He's just open pleading to a judge. Now, his charges have to do with knocking a bouncer at a bar's jaw off its hinge. Um, and uh, it's unclear because he did 10 years in prison for violent crimes. It's unclear what they're going to give him. So we don't know because he's just open pleading with no recommendation from the state's attorney. So we're all hoping the best for him, man. Um, and he's going to be keeping in touch with me. Um, you know, so I'm going to be keeping in touch with with Jumpsuit Pablo while he's in, Jay Williams while he's in, and I'll keep you guys updated on what's happening with both them dudes. Uh, but hopefully Jumpsuit just gets like some, bro, if they gave him some house arrest or uh, some probation or whatever, that would be really cool, man. I'm really hoping. The Texan, what's up? Howdy from Texas. I'm taking what they're giving because I'm working for a living. Keep smashing it, JD. Hey, Texan, big up. Big love and respect, homie. If y'all want to do me a favor and smash on that like button, bro. I notice there is not a lot of likes, but there's a lot of people in the chat. Appreciate y'all. Um, Joseph Rooks, Arizona in the house. Hell yeah, bro. Izzy Dark Lord. Oh, God, the tongue shiz with Honaki weirds me out. If you eat, how do you know what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to do that to y'all. Um, GBS1980, would you come to Australia, JD? I would love to come to Australia, bro, but I got all the felonies, and they don't want me there. Uh, they won't let me in the, in the country, bro. Um, they won't even let Jelly Roll there, and he's he had a number one hit for like three weeks in a row in Australia, and they won't let him come because he has like, I think, one or two felony charges from when he was like 17 or 18 years old. Like, I've got a lot more felonies than dude. Uh, like, a lot. Like, 50-something more felonies than Jelly Roll. So, unfortunately, Australia won't let me in there. I wish that I could, man. I love my Australians, bro. Y'all are fam, dog. Y'all are wild. I would just hang out with y'all, bro. Like, I feel like dead-ass sober, we would have a good-ass time just kicking it, bro. I, I, I really appreciate y'all. Tommy B, it's my birthday. Happy birthday, Tommy B. My dog. Hell yeah. Uh... Please, I need Stevens in the hat to cuss me out for surviving for 23 straight years. Prayers for Pablo all the way. Hey, babe, would you do me a favor and go grab me the Officer Stevens hat? It's Tommy B's birthday. If you can find it. John Coffley, or Coffee. I don't know how to pronounce your name, bro. If I said that wrong, it wasn't disrespect. I apologize. But John, love your content, man. I saw that video of you helping that woman out, and it made me want to go get the shirt and the hat. I hope you're doing well and never stop being awesome. John, I appreciate you so much, bro. I love you, brother. Big love and respect to you, my dude. Um, We got Plaid and Ammo. That's a dope name, bro. Hell yeah. Hi, have you seen the Renton, Washington, 112 mile per hour car crash coverage? It's horrific and could use your take on getting it out more. I've been watching all the videos you put up. Thank you. Thank you so much. I haven't seen it, but I will look that up and I will get back to you, brother. I appreciate you. Ohio Trucker One is in the building, my dog. Uh, taking Lucas to Florida in the semi for his birthday. He's now four. He wants to go to Gatorland in Daytona Beach. That is so sick, bro. Hell yes. That's amazing. Yo, 
Happy birthday, Lucas. We love you, homie. That's dope as hell. Oh, man. Um, let's see. Where are we at? Because I know I seen something that I missed. Um, Tommy B. Did you really make it 23 years on this goddamn planet? You maggot. How dare you? Anyway, happy birthday. Why does it smell like farts and hot dog water in here? I hate this job. Steven's out. Love you, bro. Happy birthday. That was by request, babe. I'm sorry that I gave you the PTSDs and the migraines. I'm just laughing. <laughs> that was great. Hell yeah. Izzy Dark Lord. God damn it, JD. I had to do it to you, bro. Lisa B, thank you so much, sis. Big love and respect. Hell yeah. And again, Lucas, happy birthday, dog. Four is a big one, man. Enjoy that. Enjoy that in Daytona Beach. I kind of miss me some Daytona Beach right now. Um, Abby said, Abby, one of our amazing mods said, uh, please don't spam. It doesn't get you seen by JD. It gets you timed out by us. Yes, that is absolutely true. Uh, Mrs. Blaze said, thank you, everyone, for spending your evening with us. God, so much. So much. I love y'all. Uh, Joseph Rooks. I see his video praying for him. Good dude. Hell yeah, Joseph. I appreciate that, big dog. He really is a good dude. Um, Draco Cage. We're still talking about Snitch 9. We are, we're are. we not at this point, bro. We talked about Snitch 9 for the first 15, 20 minutes. And uh, now we've moved on. Um, we're just kind of co-chilling at this point. We can talk about it like a little bit, the relevant parts, um, towards the end here in a little bit. But I don't want to double up quite this soon. Um, but I appreciate you being here, big dog. Um, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Isaac, Isaac, I don't know how to pronounce your last name and I don't even want to disrespect a grown ass man by saying his last name wrong, homie. Uh, love your shirt. Where can I get one? And does it come in two X? This absolutely comes in two X, bro. It comes in two X, three X. We may have it in four X. Um, and it's at convictclothing.net. We got the t-shirt, we got the uh, tank top, and we got the hats in red and black, bro. Big love and respect to you, bro. Convictclothing.net. That's my merch. That's what I do. Uh, first, Yo, Grand Turtle said, first time seeing your lives. I watch all of your shorts. Bro, the lives are where it's at, bro, because we just hang out, bro. We hang out with our wings out, bro. We be chilling over here, doing the good thing. Don't look at me like that. It's a saying, bro. People say that. Maybe in the showers in prison, people say that. That's probably, you shouldn't say that on the internet. I love you, bro. I'm glad that you're here. We have fun on these lives, man, because I get to get to know you guys, and you guys get to know me a little better. This isn't a channel. This is a community, and we all look out for each other here, man. Sean Jones, love your work. Thank you. I love you, bro. Glad you're here, man. Tiffany Harhut, thank you for the positive vibes, bro. Thank you, sis. Thank you for saying that, and thank you for being here. Big love and respect to you, sis. Um, Scotty one love 12. You always make me laugh, bro. Have a great night. You too, brother. I appreciate you, man. Uh, bio me talent, bio metallic. I was trying to sound it out like hooked on phonics. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Bio metallic. Uh, I love the new camera angle. I can actually read. Hey, I appreciate you, big dog. Big love and respect, homie. I'm not going to shotgun the whole thing tonight. I'm not going to do it. I might do it. Not yet, though. Um, music covers. JD, love seeing a fellow brother crush recovery. As a father of five, I appreciate all of the love you have for the children. Uh, I am Irish descent as well. Music, love, music covers. What is up, homie? Big love and respect to you, dog. Five kids. That's real dad commitment, bro. And I'm proud of you. Hell yes. Big love to you, bro. Uh, Gage Lingle asked, oh, hold on, Ashley, I see you, and I love you, Ashley, I'm glad that you're here, sis, so Gage Lingle asked, what prison were you in? I went and addressed Ashley, so I didn't forget, because this is going to be kind of a long answer, because I went to prison in the state of Oregon, um, and you start off at Coffee Creek, that's like where we start here in Oregon, it's like our reception center is Coffee Creek Correctional Facility, then they shot me to Snake River, which is like our gladiator school, it's way out in the middle of the desert, and it sucks, it's a pain in the ass, then they shot me to a place called Warner Creek Correctional Facility, it's a minimum, and I didn't make it there very long, I think I was there for like two months, they said I wasn't the type of inmate they wanted at their facility, 
Well, no shit. Uh, so they sent me over to OSP, which is a maximum. It's Oregon State Penitentiary. Um, and from OSP, I did like the majority of my time there. I spent two years at OSP. Then they shot me to OSPM to let me try to get through this drug pr treatment program that they had there. And I didn't make it because I was still a knucklehead. I was still wilding out. And uh, they let a chomo into the drug rehab. And I just was, I, I wasn't fucking with him, bro. Like, uh, they wanted us to be cool with everybody. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't force myself to be cool with this chomo. Uh, so I ended up getting kicked out of the drug treatment program. Um, and then after that, I went to Sandy M, which is a minimum that has a fence. So they can let chomos there. Um, and it wasn't the worst joint that I've ever been to, but like, I really didn't like it. Then they sent me to Mill Creek, which was the most minimum spot that we had, uh, in the Valley pretty much. And, uh, it didn't even have a fence. So there were no chomos. It was a work camp. You got cool ass jobs. Uh, but I got pulled up out of there under investigation for attempting to incite a riot because we did a hunger strike because, a cop put hands on this young kid over a cigarette and we were like, nah, fire that bitch. Get that bitch out of here before somebody beats him up or stabs him. Uh, and so they called it a riot and they dragged my ass out under investigation. And I paroled from Sandy M where they took me. Um, and uh, on my way out the door, they said, delay, we're going to keep a bed open for you. And when you come back, the investigation will be over. You'll go straight to the hole in IMU. And I told them to eat a bag of funky discolored dicks. And I haven't been back to prison uh, since then. So, yeah, rub it on a chest, bro. Ohio Trucker One. His uncles gave him a small weightlifting set, and he's been trying to copy them for a while now. He loves it. Hell yeah, Lucas. That is what's up, dog. That's dope as hell, man. Big shout out to you, little brother. Is he Dark Lord? So, darker note, but I found out my old high school had four chomos there when I was. Uh, school district ignored... <clears throat> that was my spinal cord disconnecting. Uh, the school district ignored it, uh, us kids, until a kid got hurt. That's gnarly, bro, but it happens a lot, man. I'm sorry that you had to go through that and the other kids had to go through that, Izzy. The Texan, you're not our type of inmate. Yeah, you ain't my type of prison. We all agree. Uh, now, see you later, bitches. Yo, that's big facts, bro. That's big facts. The cool thing, though, about OSPM or... Uh, about Warner Creek was that it had like one of the dopest weight piles, bro. For a minimum out in the middle of nowhere in Kalamath Falls, Oregon, they had a dope weight set, bro. Like their, their whole room was sick as hell. So, um, you know, I was a little sad to say goodbye to their weights, but nothing else about that place was cool, bro, at all whatsoever. Tommy B., Jesus, fuck, I love it, bro. Thank you so much. Happy birthday, homie. I'm glad you're spending some time on your birthday with us, man. What an honor. What an honor that you would spend time on your birthday with us hanging out, bro. Big love to you. I wanted to bless you, but then I stopped myself because I don't know if I can say that on the internet. <laughs> um, Dr. Dre Light said the like button just said some stuff about all y'all's mamas. Deal with that. Yo, big ups, dog. Hell yeah. Um, Jason White, you're the man, JD. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. Hey, I'm just, I'm just a normal ass dude, bro. And I have the best community on YouTube, probably in the universe, bro. Like, I'm just so blessed that I get to hang out with y'all a couple times a week and that y'all take time out of your day to like hang out with me and we can bullshit and chop it up and get to know each other, man. It's really an honor. Each, each and every person who subscribes and joins our community, it's an honor to me. It's an honor. I never thought in my life, it's so wild. I never thought that so many people would like hang out and want to hear what a dusty ass old convict like me had to say. So I really thank you guys, man. Levi Anderson, thank you so much. Top fan Levi signing in. Real talk with all the soft boys uh, being lifted up. JD's channel swings the pendulum the other way. Appreciate the no BS channel. Let's fucking go. Hey, Levi, I'm sorry, bro. I love that you say top fan. I don't have fans, bro. I have friends and I have family, homie. You know what I'm saying? And it can be whatever you're comfortable with, but I'm just a normal ass dude, bro. Like, you know, I, I'm just a dusty ass old convict, bro. And I, I don't have fans, man. I have friends and fam. So whatever it is with you, I love you, bro. And I appreciate you. Huge love and respect to you, man. Thank you so much. That was big and it's most appreciated. Um, Let's see, Leland Case. I see you, Leland. What's up, homie? How you doing, little dude? Got that monster, I need me, 
one, I drink the mochas. I can't drink the mochas, homie, because they got too much sugar in it, bro. And, um, I, like, I drink the sugar-free ones, but damn, those mochas do taste good, homie. I just can't do it. I drink ev everything I drink is sugar-free, bro. Um, it's either sugar-free or it's, it's protein shit. That's all I do. Uh, let's see. Uh, Shep's Guitar, Rough Buff here. Shout out from Buffalo, New York. Sending prayers to Pablo, Nick Shep. Hey, big love and respect, Nick. Hell yeah, I appreciate you, big dog. Sarah Decker, hey, what's up? Love you and your story has helped me out a lot. Thank you for sharing. Sis, I appreciate that. That is the kindest thing that somebody can say to me because like, look at, this is the way that I see it, man. Like I was a drug addict for 20 years. I spent a lot of that time incarcerated. I caused so much damage to myself, to the people that I love, to the community around me. And like the only way that any of that shit means anything is if I use my story to try to reach others and to try to help others avoid some of that shit or find their way out of that. Like without that, it's just chaos and damage. But we all have a story and each of our story is important. And each of our story has the capability to connect other people to us and to be able to help them if it's not feeling so alone because they know somebody's gone through similar stuff, to help others to avoid the pitfalls that we've been through, to help others to heal and just connect with the world, man. Our stories, each of our stories is really important. Your story is just as important as mine. But I'm so honored that my story has been able to reach people and help them because that's what I want to do with my life. I want the rest of my life to be about helping other people because I spent so much of my time hurting the community around me, man. I love you guys. I love you, sis. Um, Beta Maxis, a hunger strike is a damn riot. Look, man, here's the thing. So we decided we was just not going to go to the chow hall. We wasn't fucking with the chow hall. It wasn't even a real hunger strike, dog, because I... We all had boxes with canteen, you know what I'm saying? I had my box full of canteen, and then I had another dude's box that was half full of my canteen because he didn't have no money on his books. So I was like, hey, bro, I'll fill your box up. You can eat whatever you want. I, as soon as we called hunger strike, it was me and two Serenos, two Southsiders, um, and then one other white boy. We all got together and we're like, hey, you know, we're kind of the guys who run this, this joint here a little bit. It's a minimum. It's nothing to run, you know what I'm saying? But... We're like, we're kind of big dogs here. So like, let's do a hunger strike and just not go to the chow hall. And I was like, look, I got like two boxes worth of shit. I'll feed everybody. I'll feed everybody for a couple days. Let's just shake them up and make them upset. You know what I'm saying? Show them that we're not going to put up with the bullshit. And so I opened up my box and the other box and I said, anybody who's hungry, you can eat. But if you go to the chow hall, you're getting your motherfucking ass kicked, dog, because we're in solidarity here. We're doing this for the youngster because... Not only did this cop beat up this kid over a cigarette, but then they dragged the kid to the hole and they kept the cop on shift. And we were like, nah, dog, nah. That kid didn't do nothing. That cop put hands on him. That shit's illegal. You ain't gonna treat him like that. So that's what kind of started it. And it wasn't even a real hunger strike because we were still eating. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it, it, it was what it was, but it definitely wasn't no damn riot, homie. Um, let's see. Dr. Dre Light said, don't be weird, people. Man, I can't promise I won't be weird, Dr. Dre Light. I, I do have a long history of being weird. But I, I try to make it like a good weird. You know what I'm saying? So if anybody wants to be good weird, we're cool with that. Uh, Darren Sira, I hope to meet you someday, bro. You are a legend. Darren, I hope to meet you too. I really hope that I can meet anybody in this community, bro. Like, I really would like, me and Jax have a dream to be able to get like an RV and be able to go all around the country and, you know, hang out and do hangouts and meetups with people and just kick it, um, you know what I'm saying, and, and see the rest of the country. I think it would be super dope, bro. I got big hugs for all the homies, you know what I'm, I, I'm, I'm about that hug life, bro. Um, let's see. Uh, Ashley, Dr. Dre Light, yeah, Dr. Dre Light just got modded up tonight. Um, Anthony Sickler, fuck, I want that hat and shirt, bro. If you want the hat and shirt, they're at convictclothing.net, my friend. Uh, you can get them uh, in black or red on the hat, and the shirt comes in a tank or a t-shirt, and we about to be putting up camouflage with orange. Uh, we're, we got the hats on the way, and we're working on getting the shirts. Um, so, yeah, homie, if you want them, they're at convictclothing.net. I appreciate you, big dog. Hell yeah. Oh, also, you guys, if you guys want MAPA stickers, 
we just put up MAPA stickers on convictclothing.net. So if you want to get like, I think it's, um, I think they're like, I forget. I think it's like five for three bucks or something like that. Make pedophiles afraid again stickers. Um, and you can slap those bitches up. I'm actually, I'm waiting for mine to get here and I'm going to go take them places that I think pedophiles might be. And I'm going to slap them up just to make them uncomfortable, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to slap those things all around town to make people uncomfortable because the whole point of this shirt and this hat and the stickers and the flag is to let dudes know they shouldn't be comfortable. If they on that shit with kids, they have no space on this planet and they should not be comfortable. They should be afraid. They shouldn't exist. So, you know, I'm going to be slapping them stickers all around town in places where I think peepee -pee touchers might dwell. Uh, Matt, the man, what if we, what if we use the registry? and got their addresses and went around and just slapped them all around their houses, bro. Just boom, I'd get arrested probably. I don't know, maybe, maybe not, we'll see. Matt the man, thank you for what you do, brother. Cheers from North Carolina. I'm sober almost five and a half years. God bless you and Jax. Matt, congratulations on the recovery, homie. Big love and respect, man. That's dope, man. I love you and I'm proud of you, bro. We all in this together. Everclear Beats, what's up, man? If you're cool with sharing the story, uh, what was the most wronged you ever felt in prison, fellow inmate or CO? Everclear Beats, I'm going to let you know right now. Um, the first time Graves was here a little bit ago, some of you guys got to see my, my oldest kid. The first time that Graves came to visit me, when he walked in that visiting room, because I wouldn't let him come see me when I was at a maximum. I wasn't going to let him go to OSP. I wasn't going to let him even go to Snake River because it was a medium max. Um, I didn't want my kid going in a situation where there were chomos around. I didn't want him going in a situation where he might be scared or traumatized. So after about three years, I finally got to Mill Creek and he came to visit me the first time. He walked into that visiting room and he looked and I saw his eyes scanning around looking through the room for his dad. And he looked at me and kept looking because he didn't recognize me because that's how fucking long I had been out of my son's life when he needed me, when he was little. And that was the most wronged I ever felt. And it was by myself because I did my kid dirty and I did myself dirty. Uh, I put myself there. I took myself to where I couldn't protect my kid. And that's my, my main job in life should always be to protect my kids, to protect my family. And I did some dumbass shit and I felt like such a punk bitch, bro. Sitting in prison, my own kid don't even recognize me over some dumbass shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I wish that that was the turnaround point in my addiction. I wish that was enough to get me to change my life in that moment because it should have been, dog. It should have been, but it just wasn't, bro. I knew I was a punk for not being there for my kid. I knew I was a bitch because my own kid didn't recognize me when he looked me in the face. You know how disgusting of a human being that made me feel like? I hated myself for that. I've hated myself inside for that. I've done so much work to let go of my self-hatred and self-loathing for the way that I did my family dirty by going to prison, by being strung out, man. Um, but yeah, that was probably the worst feeling that I ever had in prison, brother. And it was because of me. I was the one who was responsible for that shit. I'm the one who punked myself out. I'm the one who hurt my family like that. So I love you, bro. Matt, the man, thank you so much for what you do. Sober five years. Big Matt, what's up, dog? Congratulations, man. Hell yeah, we love to see it. Dustin Casto. Uh, Casto. I think it's one or the other. I said it right at least one time. I love you, bro. Hey, JD, I hope you and the family are doing well. Uh, I'm talking, I'm taking a quick break from the side job. Woody Wood Chipper, a good cartoon name for a cartoon character, uh, a good cartoon character name. Hell yeah, brother. That's what's up, man. Big love and respect to you, dude. Appreciate you, Dustin. Ashley, what is up? Hey, JD, how are you and Jax and the pups doing? They are amazing. Jax is sitting right there looking beautiful as ever. She has Moxie sitting right next to her and then Zero right on the other side. Um, I don't know what uh, it would have on it, but my daughter likes you and I'd love to get her a little convict clothing shirt. Mm, I don't know that we have anything that I would consider completely appropriate for kids. Uh, I... 
I kind of wish that we did because I would send something to the little one because we love the little one, but I don't know that we have anything that's exactly appropriate and we don't have any kid sizes, unfortunately, at the moment. But I love you, sis, and if we can figure something out, we'll do it. Uh, pretty fly for a Wi-Fi. A sex riot just happened in a California prison yard. A, a what? And, and excuse me? A what? A, a sex riot? Exactly how does a sex riot work? Please somebody explain that to me because I'm just not sure what's happening. Uh, Mr. Gold Kush, thank you for being genuine. Proud of you, bro. Thank you, brother. I love you and I appreciate you. Um, Matt the man, I understand that feeling. I've been sober for five and a half years. However, I'm only now able to get the mental health help I need. Uh, I will struggle within myself. Uh, hey, bro, look, man, recovery is one thing. Self-love is like the next plateau, bro. That, that mental health help, that self-love, like all of it, it all is like part of the same thing, but like it's, it's so layered, bro. And you're going to have big pushes forward and big progress and healing. And then you're going to have days where you slide backwards with it. None of, none of that shit's linear and it's all okay. It's wherever you're at with the process. And I'm proud of you, dog. We are in this together, literally. Ohio Trucker One, Lucas, wa uh, Lucas wants to know where the puppies are. Also, Wood Chipper, they are both sleeping right now, and they're not being super crazy. So I'm gonna just leave them over there. Lucas, hang out, wait for the Gators, because you're gonna like the Gators a lot more than these two. Uh, but I love you, bro. Appreciate you, my dude. Anthony Cavazos is in the chat. Anthony, what is up, dude? Appreciate you, big dog. Do prisons have therapists in prison? It would be a great idea for inmates to talk to someone so they can get better for when they get out and not become repeat offenders. Anthony, you are wise beyond your years, my friend, even talking about that. Um, they, they have what they call counselors in prison. Um, they do not do any sort of like actual therapy. Uh, I have never seen them actually help anyone. Um, in places where they do have like an actual therapist, you, you can't be free to say what you want to to them because if you say too much, they're going to put you in isolation, bro. They're going to put you in the hole. They're, it's, it's just too much of a mandatory reporter situation. It's not good, bro. It's not good. There's no real mental health services um, in prison for anyone. Um, you can't really get that there. There's no free mental health services. There's no real free medical services. When you're in there... Uh, they ain't doing much for you, bro. They'll keep you alive. That's about it. So uh, I wish that they would do something for mental health because these people, the majority of these people are coming back and they're going to be me or your neighbor, bro. And what type of neighbor do you want? I don't want a neighbor who's like about to reoffend. I don't want a neighbor who's, you know, sticking needles in his neck and uh, doing wild shit and stealing my catalytic converter or, you know, stabbing elderly people down the street, bro. Getting mental health help will help with these things so that they don't end up reoffending. Um, also, I want to say, yo, I just, uh, I just see Mrs. Blaze, no slurs or assholery, no trans homophobia, no racism either. And that is big facts. I do not tolerate that here. Uh, I, everything here needs to be love and respect positivity. You can 100% disagree with me on whatever you want to disagree with me on. We're totally cool with that. You can disagree with each other. Just please do not be pieces of shit to anyone. We don't do the piece of shit thing here. This is not that type of community. Like, I don't come on here and bash nobody but chomos, bro. Uh, and I, I expect people to be cool to each other. I love you guys, man. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, are you... Are you like predator catchers? Uh, Marcus Marsh wants to know. Um, so I did some work back in the day uh, with Anonymous and Ghost Sec on uh, exposing predators in their communities. Um, but like, I don't do like, here's the thing is like, it's really hard to get the cops to work with you when you're doing that type of stuff. Um, and I, my thing is I, I either want to see him buried somewhere or I want to see him in prison. So, like, I don't like the dudes who just embarrass them on the internet so they could get clout and views. That shit, to me, is corny as fuck, bro. Like, you literally have the opportunity to uh, do something to save kids, and instead you're trying to get likes and views. That's fucking lame, bro. Uh, I want to see people that, you know, are getting them hemmed up on cases. And not like, I'm going to call the cops if you don't let me get a video of you. Like, put them in jail either way, bro, before they fuck a kid. 
Because uh, you can't unfuck a kid. Uh, let's see, let's see. What do we got here? Sorry, I just went off on a tangent. I mean, no disrespect to the predator catchers. I just can't do it, bro. I, I just can't do it. Uh, Javi Lara, what about them shades? These shades are from Blenders. Uh, most of my sunglasses are from Blenders. Uh, these were actually sent to me by the Blenders company, bro. A good friend of mine at the Blenders company. Really good people. Hooked me up with uh, several pairs because he saw that I wear Blenders all the time in my videos. And he was like, yo, we should up your game. We should restock you. And he sent me some, bro. It was super cool. Blenders are my favorite glasses. And it's pretty much all that I wear, bro. Um, Let's see. Matt the man said, last one for the night, but thank you for the love tonight. I wish you the best and for the chomos, fucking wood chipper. Love you, Matt, and I appreciate you being here, homeboy. Big love and respect to you. And I want you to know if no one else has told you lately, bro, I'm so goddamn proud of you. You know, we can get like five years in or three years in, however long into recovery or our healing journey. And like people forget that it's still hard and it's still a daily process and they forget to like tell us, man, God damn, I'm proud of you, bro. Look how far you've come. So let me tell you, bro, I'm goddamn proud of you, bro. You're doing good and I appreciate you, man. Um, those shirts are fire. Eclipse. Yo, the shirt is at convictclothing.net, homie. We got the tank top. We got the t-shirt. We got the hats in black and red and we got hats and camouflage coming soon. So if you want to check it out, it's my merch, bro. It's my merch. Uh, and I got a bunch of other stuff there too. We also got stickers. Um, and we also got uh, flags, bro. So I appreciate you, big dog. Glad that you like it. Um, is he Dark Lord? Ayo, hey, that might have to be my new work hat. Great for customer service. Hey, big facts, dog. Hell yeah. Um, Anthony Cavazos, what did you do, bro? Uh, Anthony said the problem with many predator catchers online is that uh, the way they confront the predators can ruin a case legally and it makes the cop's job harder, which makes predators staying on the streets uh, and keep ruining lives. Big facts, dog. Big facts. And I wish that like law enforcement would help educate people that are going to do that on how to do it properly. You know what I'm saying? Because if they would teach us on how to do it properly, how to get evidence in a way that will help them get a conviction, these predator catchers would do it, bro. I believe that they would. But, you know, the police aren't trying to work with nobody. I don't know why they're not excited to get pee, -pee touchers and kindergarten commandos and playground extraction specialists up out of our communities where they can't hurt no more kids. But it seems like the least of their priorities to me, dog. Foxing with Fishy One. Make a UV project, uh, protective shirt. It'd be a hot seller. Hell yeah, that's a good-ass idea, Fishing. I appreciate you, man. Hell yeah. Uh, let's see, what else we got going on here? Uh, Eclipse, you're a legend, JD, bro. I'm just a normal-ass dude. I'm, I'm, I'm your homie, bro. I'm your friend. I'm your neighbor, and I love you, big dog. I appreciate you so much. Um... Sheriff's, Marcus Marsh says, Sheriff's departments are punks, bro. They protect pedos. You know, and I've seen a lot of that in a lot of uh, counties. But also, like, if you go out to Florida, bro, them dudes out in Florida do not play when it comes to protecting kids. Uh, a lot of them dudes is doing the real Lord's work out there. Uh, it just depends on where you're at, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, here's the thing is, like, you're going to see on a regular basis Sheriff Grady Judd, he going after them PP touchers, bro. He putting them away out there in Polk County. Uh, they, they don't want to get caught up in Polk County because not only are they going to put them away, but then you're going to have Sheriff Grady Judd trolling your ass on a national platform, making you look stupid and perverted. He Sometimes he gets it wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't really like the way that he did the... Uh, the, the way that he did the pagan who like, let's face it, dude, like that dude, literally he caught him up in a bust and said it was human trafficking and exposed him on the internet saying he was basically a human trafficker. That dude was trying to get a $40 blowy bro. And bikers do that shit sometimes, bro. Acting like it's, you know, he was like swooping kids or something. It was just kind of foul the way he did that. But, you know, I do appreciate the work that he does on a regular basis out there in Polk County, getting them, them, perverts getting them pee, pee touchers off the streets anthony cavazos don't the police set up predator uh predator sting operations of their own you know what out in florida they do it all the goddamn time bro that's what i was just talking about you'll be seeing it happen all the time 
Uh, a lot of a lot of places you don't see him do it too much, man. You do not see him do it too much in a lot of other places, but in Florida, they are on that shit, bro. If you out there trying to like swoop up on kids, they trying to swoop you up first, bro. Florida's done a lot of work and and also giving them the death penalty. In Florida, if you if you hurt a kid under the age of 12, they can give you the death penalty. You know what I'm saying? Like they can 100% give you the death penalty and you don't even have to have you have to have a unanimous jury for the guilty verdict, but you don't have to have a unanimous jury for the uh, death penalty. You know, the jury often decides whether or not you're going to get the death penalty. You only need eight out of 12. They decided that, look, not, not everybody's going to want somebody's death on their hands, even if it's justified. So we'll do two thirds. If two thirds of the jury wants this, this pedophile to be killed, then we're going to kill him. So they've really made it easier access. It's like an express lane to uh, taking these dudes right up off the planet. And I couldn't be more here for that, bro. Um, Raving Dad Gaming, what keeps you motivated in life? Well, Raving Dad Gaming, here's the thing. is like my gratitude, bro. My gratitude for what I have. I have to keep myself humble enough uh, to be able to appreciate and feel that gratitude. And then that gratitude gets me through every single day, bro, because I have been in the gutter. I've been in jail. I've been in prison. I've been in the trap house. Uh, I've been... Places like I would literally honestly rather go back to prison sober than be back in the streets balling out addicted to drugs, bro. Because when I was addicted to drugs, I was a 24 seven slave to little bags of pills or powder or shards, whatever the case may be at the time, because I've been, I did 20 years as an addict, bro. Um, I'm freer in prison sober than I am on the streets using dog. That shit owned my life and it took me over. So, um, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, bro, what keeps me going is the gratitude that I have for the life that I have today. I get to wake up next to my best friend and she's way too pretty for me, dog. I don't deserve a girl that pretty. I got the prettiest of all the pretty bitches. Uh, I got my kids back in my life, all of them except the one that died from a fentanyl poisoning, bro. Um, you know, I get to be there for my family, bro. Like my, my parents live right next door to me. So, you know, when my dad goes out of town to do a job or something, um, you know, cause he's still, I, I tried to get him to quit working, man. Pops is a, he's a G bro. He's a Vietnam vet. He says he doesn't want to stop working. So when, when pops is out of town, I can take care of my mama, bro. I get to take care of my mama today. You know, like you can't even imagine how much that means to me after sitting through prison and you know, who, who wrote me? Was it my friends that wrote me? Only a few of my friends wrote me while I was locked up, homie. But my mama, my mama wrote me all the time. I got three or four letters, you know, with writings from every day. My mama would write me and she would send it out every, you know, every other day or some shit. She wrote me the entire time I was down, bro. I get to take care of her now. As she finishes the last years of her life, I get to ride out and return that, bro. Return that love. These are the things that keep me going. Getting The things that keep me motivated in life is getting to help somebody who's never once in their life known that they could do it. And they've never once felt like they were worth it. And you get them into recovery and they... They see finally that, bro, I can be sober. You know, bro, I can get a job. Uh, you see them get their kids back in their life that they didn't ever think was going to happen. You see them get their first car, their first truck, buy their first house. Seeing other people succeed makes me happy as fuck, bro. I simp for that shit. I'm a little baby back b -b -b bitch for watching other people make it, dog. Watching other people come up. That shit is like a drug to me, homie. And I love that shit. Those are the things that keep me motivated in life. Uh, cause bro, I, I can't even, you don't even know, bro, how lucky and blessed I feel to be able to be here right now. I was supposed to die when I was 27, like Kurt Cobain and Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin and my dog, Lil Pete, bro. I was supposed to go out at 27. Instead, I turned 28 in prison and I was mad as a motherfucker about it. I was like, why am I still here? I shouldn't be here. Now I have to get out and pay bills and shit till I die. Um, you know, I never planned for any retirement or anything like that. I still don't know what I'm going to do, but you know, I'm just blessed to be here. All this shit is extra credit and, and I'm incredibly blessed to be here. Anthony Cavazos, when I was a kid, I always thought drugs were cool. I used to pretend to snort fund it powder, bro. Like, can we get, can, is, 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 are me and Anthony the only people that uh, used to snort shit like candy when we were kids? Can I get a, a, a W in the chat if you can relate, and an L in the chat if we're just degenerates. Let me know. I want to know. It should be the other 
<laughs> Yo, like, let me know. Did you guys snort shit like Fun Dip? Because I know that I did. Law 3, I appreciate you. Um, Law 3, I appreciate you again, homie. Thank you so much. I'm looking for this. How do inmates treat pimps? I don't know, homie. I never seen no pimps when I was in prison because pimping and pandering is a federal charge. We didn't have nothing like that in state. So, um, I don't know. But I do know that it's a sexual offense. So, uh, probably not too good. You know, one of these days I'm going to get my good boy Chad Marks on here from Blood on the Razor Wire TV. And when we get my dog Chad Marks on here, um, we're going to talk about all of those different things that are like federal uh, as opposed to state. Uh, I'd also like to get him on here and talk to him about like what he's heard about how R. Kelly be doing in there since the last time he got beat up and pissed on, bro. Um, Ember McLean, it's so good to see you again. Wood chipper. Love you, sis. Hell yes. Um... Bro, I'm seeing a lot of wins, uh, a lot of people that can relate, uh, a lot more than the L's. I'm seeing some L's. I 100% get it. Yeah, bro. Uh, yeah, Joseph, Joseph, Pixie Snick snorters. Yeah, so like, here's the thing. In, in prison, in a county jail, one of the currencies is coffee. They sell you freeze-dried Folgers or freeze-dried, uh, uh, what's that? Fuck, God. Uh, well, they have Keefy, Keefy coffee, um, but it's freeze-dried coffee. So that's one of the currencies in prison. So uh, sometimes people will ask, the cat is here and she can relate. I love you so much, the cat. It's so good to see you, sis. If somebody comes begging for some coffee, a lot of the time people will be like, yo, I'll give you a cup, but you got to snort a line. And they'll chop up a line of freeze-dried Folgers or Maxwell House, that's the one I was trying to think of, and dudes will have to snort a line of coffee, bro, it's so, <laughs> it's so nasty, bro, um, but yeah, back in the day, I'd be snorting pixie sticks, bro, like, I, I thought I was doing something, I got a sugar rush, bro, you know, I was an ADHD little dumbass, so I thought I was doing something big, bro, um, yo, I see a bunch of other people with the pixie sticks and the fun dip, that's what's up, man, hell yeah, uh, Yo, you did it with Pop Rocks? Brian McKeever just said that he snorted Pop Rocks. Brian, how was that? That does not sound fun. I mean, you know, uh, I've heard of people using Pop Rocks for other oral activities, but snorting Pop Rocks? God damn, dog, that's G'd up. Yo, we got a Kool-Aid win from Carmela Ella. Hell yeah, sis. Smarties, yeah. Josh and Lynn Renee, what's up? Um... Jonas Bloomberg, what's up, man? How you doing, brother? Big love and respect. Um, nope, I've been there, bro. <laughs> I feel you, homie. Yeah, a lot of pixie sticks. Uh, John Dillman, you are such an inspiration, man. Much love, big man. Hey, I appreciate you, and I love you, family. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for being here. Dr. Dre Light, lemonade powder. I had a problem. <laughs> when life gives you lemons, snort lemonade powder, homie. Seriously, don't do that. That shit sounds like it hurts like a motherfucker. Uh, serious Poo. Cool. Caught a live hang. Love your uh, channel, JD. Good values, positive vibes. Serious Poo, we're so glad that you caught a live because lives are my favorite part of this whole thing, man, because I get to actually just communicate back and forth with y'all. And this is not a channel. I appreciate you saying it, but it's a community, dog, because this is not just about me. This is about all of us. We are all in this together. And if you here, bro, you either a friend or you family. It's whatever you're comfortable with. And I'm glad that you're here, Serious. Hell yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, the Dez, JD, as an adult who was abused slash graped for years as a child, thank you so much for everything you do and say, hey, I've been there as a child, so I'm 100%, I'm with you, sis, and I love you, and I'm glad that you're here, and I'm glad that you get some kind of, some kind of feeling of validation or catharsis or connection here, you're welcome here, that's part of the point, man, that's 100% part of the point, and I love you. Uh... Starlight Genesis, love the hat. Thank you so much. It's from my uh, it's from my clothing line. It's at convictclothing.net. I appreciate you. Um, damn man, this chat's going fast, boy. Let's see. Uh, Corneva Narv Narviz. If I said that wrong, I'm sorry. I love you, sis. Uh, I appreciate you. I used to snort chalk. Damien, damn, bro, that's crazy. Um, what do you think about Fresno? 
Uh, Tavito, Ramirez. Uh, I never spent a lot of time in Fresno, homie. I did a lot of time uh, hanging out in Santa Rosa and uh, Petaluma and a little bit of time in Sacto. You know what I'm saying? But I really ain't spent a whole lot of time down in Fresno. I really can't give an educated opinion about it. Um, I was in LA not too long ago, but never too much time in Fres, bro. Michael Murphy, what is up, homeboy? Hey, JD, my local YMCA is offering a mental health first aid class that I'm going to be taking in May. I live in an urban area with a lot of homeless people. Uh, where can I learn to use Narcan? Well, I'm not sure exactly where you live, bro, um, but you can go to, if you want to learn online, bro, go to endoverdose.net, bro. End Overdose does amazing things. They'll even send you free Narcan, homie. They'll send you a whole free kit. Um, wondering if I got, oh, hey, here we go right here. And Overdose will send you one of these kits, bro. If you want to get trained in how to use Narcan, they are absolutely awesome people and good friends of mine, bro. Um, I love you and I appreciate you, dog. Uh, Nikki Sticks snorted ants. <laughs> I couldn't do it, bro. It couldn't be me. Um, Isabel just... Just as Raken. I don't know how to say your name, and I'm sorry about that, but I, I'm not going to try again because I'll look dumber than I already do. Uh, I got a historic opinion fan. Uh, I, Bro, I can't read Gaelic anymore, homie. I can't read Gaelic anymore. I was studying it when I was in prison, and I've fallen off with my, with my Gaelic studies. But it ends with bless, and I appreciate you, and I love you, family. Thank you so much. Um... There ain't nothing worse than, uh, that burns worse than dope facts. Facts, bro. 100%. You already know. Um, let's see. Uh, pedo for prison 2024 Biden. I, I mean, bro, if they can, like, really, I feel like, uh, they haven't done any looking into any of those types of charges on Biden. I don't feel like they'd have to dig too hard. I mean, like, let's look at the diary situation with his daughter, bro. Hmm. That's my Biden impersonation right there. I'm not going to fall on the floor and not be able to walk around or speak straight, but that, it's just, that's my impersonation. Uh, Anthony Cavazos. One time when I was little, I let all the air out of my teacher's tires and someone ratted me out. <laughs> oh, damn, bro. Did you get charges or did you just get in trouble for that, Anthony? Like, did they call your parents or what happened with that? Um... Flip Sanchez, you still cook up any prison meals when you're low on cash? And what's your favorite? So just the other day, bro, the wife was out. She was in an appointment and I was feeling kind of, I was feeling kind of myself, bro. You know what I'm saying? And like, I, you know, I keep some soups up in this bitch. Uh, and, uh, so I made myself a prison burrito. Um, I don't like to make them when the wife is around because she judges me. She judges me. <laughs> she judges me for eating that peasant ass shit. You judge me, right? <laughs> I don't judge you. I Yo, I'm not, enough. I'm not going to lie, bro. I put them, I crushed up them, uh, fiery hot, Dor uh, Cheetos and crushed up Doritos on that bitch, bro. It was fire, bro. I'm not going to lie. It was so good. And how did you feel afterwards? Sick. I felt very sick. I'm not going to lie. Days. Yeah. It took me about three days to recover. Yeah. Okay. Nicholas Dumais. Thank you so much, homie. Big love and respect. I appreciate you, bro. Hell Yeah. Um, do you like Trump? Not really. Not really. I, I don't like either of the choices. I think it's absolutely crazy that um, out of everybody in this country, all of you amazing, beautiful, intelligent people out there, that we stuck with people that are in their 70s, bro. It just don't make no sense to me, bro. It don't make a, a lick of sense to me. We should have a strong, powerful, smart leader that represents the actual wants of the people. And I would like to see somebody who has served this country because you know, I don't think we should have somebody in charge of this country who's not willing to risk their life for it. And, you know, to me, that's the military. But that's just me. We always get politicians or businessmen. I think we should have, like, a real strong-ass leader everybody can get behind that's not ancient, bro. Like, that doesn't need uh, seven different types of pills and some Metamucil at the end of the night. But that's just me. Anthony Cavazos, I just got in trouble. My teacher was furious for some reason. You let the air out of her tires, dog. Of course she was furious with you. What do you mean, bro? I love you, dog. For some reason, get out. <laughs> Vicky Hartzell, Demp Wolf. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate you. Big love and respect to you, sister. 
Um, let's see, let's see. What do we got going on here? Favorite little peep song, Austin, bro. So like, there's so many good little peep songs. I mean, I could be like that same basic bitch and say star shopping because like everybody loves star shopping, right? Um, uh, there's so many good songs though. I like a lot of the ones that aren't on call me when you're sober one or two or any of the other albums. Um, like, uh, five below would probably be my, my favorite, bro. Like five below was such an epic song. And like, I used to get like, I used to like the bowl from the bottom to that and just hang out for days at a time, bro, with that on repeat. Aguilar family, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Original owner 777 is in the chat. What is up? JD, try ramen soup uh, with added cup of soup, sack it. Uh, it puts the noodles on another level. Oh, hell yeah. Next time I want to feel sick for a couple days, I'm going to try that, homie. I can't eat soups too much, bro. Like, I ate soups so much for so long that they just do me dirty now, and I feel sick. Uh, Maxwell, Maxwell Gordon, Matthew Gordon, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much, brother. Sean Mills, I'm sorry. I was trying to get to your comment, and it just blew past me, and it's gone now. But I love you, and I appreciate you. I'm sorry I missed it, bro. Ohio Trucker, I snorted crushed water, uh, warheads. Bro, those sour warheads? Are you kidding me? That's insane, dog. I bet that sucked, bro. I feel like that's on par with like just, you know, that old school biker dope, bro. Uh, the best thing ever. Big love and respect to you, homie. Um, best way to make it in prison. Wade, the very best way to make it in prison is to not go. Don't go. Do not go. Prison sucks, bro. There's nothing in prison that's worth a fuck. Everything in prison sucks. Um... Don't go, but if you find yourself there, look, here's the thing, man. Be respectful, uh, you know, of, of others and of yourself. Give others respect, but demand your respect as well. If somebody disrespects you, handle your business. The, the, the sooner that you handle your business, the less you're going to have, have to handle your business with others. Don't gamble. Don't do drugs. Don't get wrapped up in gangs, bro. All that shit's for the birds, bro. Just do your time. Get out. Conduct yourself with respect and demand respect from others, period. I mean, I did things a little bit differently, but I don't recommend that to other people because it just honestly, bro, it's just drama. It just hurts. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I could have gotten out a lot earlier than I did if I hadn't wilded out, bro. I did every day of my sentence. You're supposed to get good time and earn time. I refused to work, so I wasn't getting no earn time. Uh, and good time, I, I did not. I did not conduct myself properly. I 100% was not on my best behavior. I was on my worst behavior the entire time I was in prison. So Rain Carpenter, yo, the hat is killing me. Thank you so much. I make them. They're my merch. I love these things. Um, did you see Lil Peep in concert? Bodybuilding, bro. Oh, my heart hurts. I did not, bro. I never got to see Peep in concert, unfortunately. I was strung out or locked up through so much of my life that I missed some of the, the people that I really wanted to see that aren't with us anymore. And I would have really liked to see Peep in concert. I got to see Nirvana. So, I mean, that was pretty cool. <clears throat> I've seen, uh, I've seen, um, let's see, I've seen uh, Tool, like, eight, nine times, Deftones 15 times. I saw him last year. That was my 15th time. Um, I've seen, I've seen a lot of cool shows, man. Um, let's see the best thing ever. How do you feel about people who get classified as sex offenders, but just had sex in public or peed? I think that's, so look, here's the thing is like, there's a big difference between like you're drunk at two in the morning and there's a big line for the bathroom at the bar. And so you go out in the alley and pee or like, the thing is that a lot of dudes who are like perverts and flashers, they'll go out to a school and run they shit up and show kids. And then they act like all they did was, you know, pee in public. So you really got to get into the paperwork and actually see. But if somebody just pissed in public, bro, we've all pissed in public. Is there any dude in this chat who is not pissed in, 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 in a park, on a tree? You know what I'm saying? On a job site. Give me, give me a win if, if you're a dude and you've had to piss in public and it wasn't nothing perverted. Give me an L if you've made it through your whole life without pissing in public. Because I, I want to see. This is a social experiment. I love you. Run it up for me, you guys. 
Uh, and girls too, if you want to participate. I don't want to leave you guys, you girls out. Shane White, does God play a part in your life, JD? A huge part in my life. God is an instrumental part in my life, and I'm very grateful, and I'm very humbled, but I don't follow any religious shit, man. Like, I have my own personal relationship with the God of my understanding, and uh, I don't fuck with religion because I, I've seen too much shit, and I don't really relate. Um, Anthony Cavazos, if I was pregnant, president... I'd make so many changes. This world could be prosperous and happy with low crime rates. Anthony, get in there and I will vote for you, homie. 100%. Uh, let's see. I'm checking on this. I'm looking for these win, these these W's and L's. Um, I am seeing... Damn, this is a long chat. A bunch of wins. Um, Abby, you've never peed in public? I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked. <laughs> Peed in my BMW. <laughs> Jack's peed in her own leather seats of her BMW once. Look, I was I was stuck. There were alligators. <laughs> Jack peed in my BMW. Bro, I'm not gonna lie, bro. If there's alligators surrounding my shit, I'm 100. percent I'm gonna piss in my car too. I don't care. I ain't getting bit by no alligator. Uh, I really do. I really do enjoy uh, going out where there's alligators, though. Like, I'm not really super scared of them shits, bro. You just Zig and zag, bro. That's all you got to do. You zig and zag when you run away. Um, what was your wife Jack's first concert? It's funny that you should ask that. So this is a cool story. So me and Jack's, I was on the West Coast out here. And one of my first big arena concert, uh, out, first ever big arena concert was Depeche Mode uh, Faith and Devotion Tour. And Jax's first big arena concert that I asked to go to, that she asked to go to and wanted to go to, was the Depeche Mode Faith and Devotion tour in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, our first big concert, but I've been going to concerts like for a long time at that point. But they were all small underground clubs here in Eugene or Portland. My first big arena show was her first big arena show she wanted to go to. Anthony Cavazos. I used to try to hit street signs with my lemonade. <laughs> That's what's up, dog. Victor Rashbeer, thank you so much, homie. I appreciate you. Huge love and respect, my dude. Jeff Ferkins, I uh, love you, JD. You're helping me stay sober off that yellow. I know you know. I 100% do, and I'm proud of you, dog. Every day, every hour, every minute is a win, and I'm proud of you. You got this, dog. Um, there are so many Ws. So, like, look, um... L is cap for a dude. I thought you were actually saying L, and then I'm like, nah, he's just, yeah, bro. All dudes are pissed in public, okay? So, like, if you're just trying to piss, bro, and you're just in a situation, to label you on the registry is foul, dog. That's foul. Why would we do that to our people? That shit just ain't right. But if you at a school and you trench coated up, bro, like you, you, you gotta be, you gotta leave the planet, bro. You, you're getting evicted from breathing. Like you gotta go. I'm canceling your subscription to airy stuff, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a huge difference, but you gotta get into the paperwork. That's why when cats show up, uh, and, and you see their paperwork and you're like, oh, oh, you gotta look into it sometimes when it comes to statutory charges. Cause if it's a, Fucking 19-year-old with a 17-year-old. We're not trying to fuck that kid up, bro. That kid got bum beefed. Renaissance 610, thank you so much. Um, and if somebody just, you know, if somebody got hemmed up on a charge for something stupid like peeing in public, we don't want to hurt that person, dog. You know what I'm saying? So, and it's dumb that they even got bum beefed like that. Um, but generally, for the most part, that's generally in most states. Every state that I've ever seen, it's a misdemeanor and not a felony. So those people aren't going to go to prison. But depending on who sees you, it can be a felony. Um, you know, if, if a kid happens upon you while you're just, just long out, just, you know, draining it, then you can catch a felony for that. But, you know, uh, I, I've never really seen much of that happen by accident. Uh, unknown. Hey, JD, big up from PA. Uh, I've been cut, I know, in media and movies and stuff. Uh, you see rape so much in prison. Is it as common as they show in movies? Absolutely not, homeboy. Unknown, it is absolutely not like in the movies where it's just like dudes are getting their cheeks clapped in the showers. Bro, bro would get stabbed if he was clapping somebody's cheeks in the showers, bro. Like, that is not how shit goes. Like, that's just not how it is. And, like... At least in the prisons that I've been in, I know there's some people get weird, like Alabama prison is weird as shit to me, bro. 
But, like, if you a good-ass white dude, like, and I mean by good, I mean, like, you're not down on PP toucher charges uh, and you're not a snitch, you are not getting your booty taken, bro, because the gangs will come and kill whoever did that to you, bro. And that's why there is value in having gangs, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, some of these gangs that we have out there, people are like, oh, fuck the gangs. If you go to prison, bro, the gangs might be the reason that some dude doesn't slide up inside of you against your will. Because the gangs police those yards and they handle the shit that the cops don't see and that the cops really probably wouldn't do much about, dog. So, you know, that that's kind of what it is. Uh, Octave Part... Octave Perfate. I'm sorry if I messed up your name, brother. As a former law enforcement officer, I love your content. I respect you and your views. I think we should do a podcast together. Hey, I think that would be dope, man. I appreciate you. Big love and respect to you, brother. Uh, let's run an episode sometime, man. Um, if I was, Anthony Cavasso said, if I was president, I'd make gas prices 20 cents and 30 cents a gallon like it was in the 50s. Bro, if you could figure out how to do that in the 1950s, that would be sick, bro. That would be super sick. Uh, check map, boys. I'm working out while watching you, lol. Just trying to be like you. Uh, show those guns. What These old things, bro, I'm still working on them, man. You know what I'm saying? They in the shop, bro. I just got a, I caught a flat on these bitches, dog. Hey, get that workout, though, bro. I'm proud of you. Big dog that shit up, man. Hell yeah. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Abby, thank you for dropping that link to the merch, convictclothing.net. If you want to pick up a hat or a tank or a t-shirt or a flag or stickers, because we got stickers of this now. And they're cheap. And you can slap them around and make pedophiles in your local neighborhood feel afraid. And that's what it's really all about, ain't it? Um, Matt Tindall, what's up, Irish? What's up with you, homeboy? How you doing, dog? Alyssa Scott, Alyssa Scoville, sis, welcome. Some stories hit close to home. My little sister was molested at 13. The guy threatened to kill us, had to look behind our backs until he got arrested. Hey, I 100% understand, and I'm sorry that your family went through that, and I think that you're just a warrior, and you're a badass, and I'm glad that you're out here, and thank you for taking the time to message. I love you so much. Um, Win Beard, thank you. I, I grew it myself, bro. I've been working on it for a little while now, and you guys, I'm just going to warn you, like, just so you know, as the summer comes and I get out in the sun, this shit is about to get a lot more red. I'm just telling you right now, you'll still be able to see the gray because I got them silver fox streaks in it, right? But I'm going to let you know right now, I didn't bleach my beard. I didn't do no super metro shit. It just gets lighter in the sun. As I get more in the sun, my eyes turn less hazel and more like light green. And my beard turns more red, bro. It's just an Irish thing. I'm like a... Like one of those body glove shits from the 80s or a Transformer or something. Uh, chameleon. A chameleon. Yo, Jay Pest is 36 days sober. That is what's up, homeboy. Hell yeah. Big love and respect to you. I'm damn proud of you. Um, Chinese Communist Party asked, were you ever stabbed? Not in prison and not in a story that I can talk about publicly. <clears throat> hey, JD, are there any Native American games? Pious slow man, 100%. And they're good dudes, man. Uh, at least out here on the West Coast, bro. Like, I rode out with a lot of the natives, bro. They were really good dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had my gang that I was in. I was in Irish Pride. I rode with Irish dudes. But the Irish and the natives have always gotten along, bro. Like, the natives actually saved our asses back in the day by sending us money when we were dying from the potato famine, bro. Um, and then, you know, we sent money when, when the natives were having a real hard time with COVID. When COVID hit... We, our people have always gotten along, bro. So when I was on the prison yard, I kept it just the exact same, bro. Because, like, when I'm on the streets, I don't give a fuck what color you are, bro. I'll celebrate you. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, I kicked it with a lot of the natives in there. And them native cats are cool as fuck, bro. I'll tell you what. I didn't see nobody else that took after each other and looked out for each other and supported each other as well as them native boys did for each other, dog. They really were a family in there on every level. And it was dope. Tommy B., Got three new pews for my birthday, and there's two new SOs in my neighborhood. Time to go cleaning, Tommy B. Look, man, you said that on the internet, so now you can't do it. You just ruined it for yourself. You can't do it. You can't talk about shit like that on the internet and then go do it. So now you got to be good and stay out here with us and not go to prison for the rest of your life. I love you. I want you around, bro. I'm just being honest with you. Carmela Ella. 
Don't forget to talk about the Whoop Chicken Supplement. Whoop, whoop. Hey, yeah, that's right. We do got a powdered energy drink called Whoop Chicken, and it is at convictclothing.net. And uh, to be honest with you, man, that shit is fire. Uh, so if you guys want to check that out, it's my very own blend, bro. You know if I need... I named it Whoop Chicken because it, it just kind of gets you up, bro. So uh, if y'all want to check that out, it's up there. Thank you so much, Carmella Ella. Love you, sis. Um, let's see. Biggie White. Bro, I'm a rapper. Biggie White. Hell yeah, Biggie White. Get it, brother. Appreciate you. Um, let's see. Let's see. Florida Operative. Hey, man, I'm a correctional officer for the FDC. And I wanted to say your content gives me hope for the inmates I try to rehabilitate back into society. And I try to give them uh, valid uh, sources. Keep it up. Hey, Florida Operative, I got friends that are locked up in Florida right now, man. And, uh, you know, I really hope that they get the help that they need. I know that a lot of the times that, uh, you know, prisons don't have too many resources for things like mental health and things like uh, substance abuse treatment. Um, but, like, I got friends that I know would probably be dead from overdose if they weren't locked up right now, man. And they're good-ass people that I love with all my heart, bro. So, you know what I'm saying? It sounds like you have a compassionate outlook on those human beings that um, – that you get to look after, bro. And that makes my heart happy just to know that people like you are out there doing it, man. It makes me feel a little better about my homies that are locked up because we all know that there are correctional officers who have a completely different outlook. So big ups and big respect to you for that, man. One love to you, dog. Anthony Cavazos, if you've seen Shawshank Redemption, how would inmates treat guys like the sisters? Bro, it's honestly been so long since I've seen Shawshank Redemption like a genuinely long time. Um, I'll have to get back to you on that after I rewatch that movie. It's been way too long. Ben Archer, yo, first live stream I've tuned into. Currently taking a break from writing my band's last song on our debut album. Uh, hope your day has been good so far. Ben, please let me know what your band is so that I can sub and support, follow you on Spotify. I really appreciate you. Welcome to the live stream. The live streams are my favorite part of this because it's where I get to know all y'all and everybody here is family, homeboy. Ben, please let me know the name of your band so I can support you, bro. I want to be able to support everything that all of you guys do, man, because the way that you guys support me, it, it means so much to me. I want to be able to support all of your guys' endeavors too. Plus, you know I fuck with the music, bro. Tracy Taylor, first live. Yay. Tracy, we're so glad you're here. Welcome. We love you, sister. Um, what that is? Spartan Marine. Yeah. Who is more of a target in prison? Chomos or cops? <sighs> Hold up. Where I was at in prison, they put all the cops that ended up getting caught up on charges in the women's prison in a completely separate area where they would never run into another male inmate. They are wildly protected. They're the only people who get a PC situation like that. Chomos get beat up daily uh, in, in, in Oregon prison system. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's all bad for them all the time. But the cops would be a huge target. Uh, but they're really protected here where I did my time. Now, I don't think it's like that everywhere, but I can't speak to places that I haven't been, homie. So, uh, you know, it, it kind of is what it is. Um... Let's see right here. DSG VX VC v v s. Hey, man, been watching you for a while. Been in the military for a minute. Hey, thank you so much for your service and your sacrifice, brother. We appreciate you. We respect the shit out of what you're doing for us, man. Uh, and in a pretty dark-minded struggle day, uh, day to day, any advice you could give me? I know it ain't a lot, but I hope it helps. Hey, homie. I can't tell you how much just you doing what you're doing means to me. You have my utmost respect, brother. You have my utmost respect for being in the military. Uh, I know that it can be really strenuous. And I know that a lot of people, like, they do not give you the mental health resources that you need. They do not give you a lot of the support that you need. Um, and sometimes it, it, can, it can make you feel some type of way to reach out, bro. But like one thing that I would do that's really important for me as far as being somebody who's in recovery for substance abuse is I found like a brother that I can lean on and tell anything to. You know what I'm saying? Like if I have a day where I'm like, man, I just don't want to be on this bitch anymore, bro. I don't like life don't feel good right now. And I'm not sure when it's going to change. And this shit just isn't hitting right. 
Uh, I have somebody that I can talk to always and forever, bro. Find somebody. Find somebody that you can just tell anything and be 100% honest with, bro, and lean on that person. And if you need to get services, bro, like to be honest with you, bro, therapy changed my entire fucking life. It changed the way that every single relationship in my life is gone. It's given me emotional maturity. It's given me spiritual maturity. So if you have those types of things that are available to you, bro, lean on them and just know that we love you and we appreciate you. And we're out here rooting for you every single day, homie. Anthony Cavazos, what would happen if you go into prison crying your eyes out and you're like, I don't want to be here. I don't belong here. You're probably going to get stabbed and beat up. have all your shit taken, bro. It's not going to work out good for you. Like, and don't get me wrong, bro. There are times when real motherfuckers cry in prison. You know what I'm saying? Somebody gets called down to the, uh, the chaplain's office because one of their family members died. You know what I'm saying? I've seen dudes go out on the yard and get on the phone and call their girl and their girl broke up with them. And, you know, they cried, bro. You know, like, or their wife broke up with them or they found out they weren't going to see their kids again. You know, like real motherfuckers cry about real shit. But if you go in there because you did some stuff and then you act like a bitch, bro, people are not going to treat you well. It's going to, it's going to be bad for you. Vicky Herzl, Demp Wolf. Uh, I have the hat you have on now. You are the great, uh, you are a great person. I believe in what you do. I watch all of your lives. Y'all, I love you so much. Thank you. You have the hat. I love you, sister. Thank you so much for the kind words and thank you for repping the brand. I appreciate you, sis. John Tyler, good evening to the Nipple King. Good evening, good sir. I appreciate you, big dog. Big love and respect, man. Um... You guys, I've been on here a lot longer than I anticipated being on here. Unknown person, 683, I love you. I'm going to get off here and I'm going to go eat some dinner, man. So I just hope that you guys have a blessed evening. Thank you for riding out with us tonight. And we are going to be back on Friday. One love to each and every one of y'all. Be good or be good at it, baby. And Ben Archer, look up Flash Hood Culture Shock. New song. I got you, bro. I'm actually screenshotting this right now. Big love to each and every one of you guys. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.